Right, so today we're going to go out and test this mid-sized Optocron monocular, as well as compare it against two similar configured binoculars, just to see which is best under varying conditions and circumstances, as well as for different uses, be that birding, hiking, kayaking, hunting, and a whole bunch of others. And we're going to start right now. Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to Best Monocular Reviews. So over the past couple of weeks, we've had some pretty dire weather. Sun has finally come out and I thought I'd take this opportunity to test this um, Optocron WP 8x30 monocular. As well as that, I thought I'd tag you along or bring you along with me just because I thought it'd make an excellent opportunity to compare them alongside or contrast them against a binocular with a similar conf configuration. That, the hope being that it might be a good way for us to explore um, a real world use as opposed to just the theory as to which would be better under certain circumstances and for certain uses as well as certain types of users. So without jinxing the weather too much and before the sun does disappear, um, let's get cracking. Now for me, one of the main reasons why I would consider a monocular over a binocular would be down to size and weight. Now, as a monocular, is essentially just a binocular cut in half. Its size and weight too are just about roughly um, half that of a binocular of equal quality and obviously with similar or equal sized objective lenses. This means with a monocular, you can either just enjoy the advantages of having a smaller device to carry about than the equivalently configured binocular. Or if you look at it another way, if you were to choose a more compact binocular, like these compact Steiners, for instance, which are of similar size to the monocular, the advantage here would be the fact that um, you have an, a bigger lens. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but I think I, I got it on film, but I just got interrupted by a military transport plane flying past. Um, so I don't know what's going on, but I hope it's not the end of the world happening right now. Anyway, so back to binoculars and monoculars and things. Um, another way of looking at this is if you swapped out your mid-sized binocular for a compact, so something like the Steiner 10 by 26s over here, the advantage here would be, well, the one thing that would happen was you would have a, an instrument or a binocular that's of similar size to the monocular and of similar weight. However, the monocular in this um, context still has the advantage in the fact that it has a larger 30 millimeter objective lens compared to the 26 millimeters in these. Now, we'll get to the advantages or the potential advantages of this um, later on in the video. But for now, if we only consider size and weight as a factor, there's a clear winner. And, and the clear winner is, is definitely a monocular. And so any, in any sort of use where um, size and weight is of critical importance, so if lightweight backpacking was your thing, or for taking around to a sporting event, perhaps for putting in your bug out bag or something like that, a monocular is definitely an option worth considering. Now seeing that much of this binocular versus monocular video focuses around compactness, portability and ease of use. Before we continue, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to a somewhat underappreciated piece of gear that I often use when out in the field. And that is my very lightweight and portable folding stool from a Swedish company called Walkstool. Now I know it's far from being the most glamorous piece of kit I own, but I genuinely feel it's excellent and well worth mentioning, especially on a day like today when I'm out for a long time as it's not only a leg saver, but definitely adds to the enjoyment when I just want to sit at a location and either take in the view or compare instruments. Then, if the ground is wet, again like today, I can use it to keep my bag and other gear off the ground when needed. Folded up, it simply straps on the side of my bag, and considering just how small and lightweight it is, it is remarkably comfortable and stable. If you are interested, I do actually have a full review of this tool, and it gives you a bunch more information as well as where to buy. When it comes to the viewable image, I find that a monocular and a binocular give me quite a different viewing experience. And thus it plays an important role in deciding which instruments I'm gonna take with me in any given circumstance. So if we were to use these two instruments as our examples once again, 
This Opticon monocular with its 30mm objective lens is able to collect as much light as one lens on this binocular. Now the fact that the binocular is able to collect twice as much light as this monocular sounds great, but in theory it doesn't just quite work out like that. Because for instance, if you were to close one eye, you don't automatically see an image that's half as bright as when you're using two eyes. Now I'm not quite sure um, the biology that goes behind this, but I think your brain somehow um, combines the, t the light from both your eyes and converts it into one image. So whilst um, I have managed to find a study on, on the internet just before coming out, and they, they did show to be an improvement um, with using two eyes versus one for things like um, hue detection as well as contrast as well as your field of view actually um, and this goes the same with a binocular versus a monocular when you use a monocular uh, I do feel a equivalent binocular does give me a slightly brighter image um, it's it's very minimal and sometimes I have to go back and forth many times just to check myself to see that if I'm not making it up Another advantage to me of a binocular over a monocular is the fact that I just feel uh, I get a much more immersive experience from using both eyes as opposed to just one. And I feel a more a part of the image that I'm looking at. Thus, any time I, I value um, image quality or image brightness over size and weight, I invariably will opt for a binocular over a monocular. So in terms of ease of use and convenience, there's no doubt that the clear winner is the monocular. Because once you've finished observing or you're moving from point to point, you just simply put on the lens cap and pop it in your pocket and off you go. Whereas even with a, a mid-sized binocular, this wouldn't be possible. Just its, its particular shape means that you'd have, a, have to have a pretty large pocket to fit it inside. So thus, uh, the alternative is obviously to have it uh, on a neck step around your neck or use a bino harness or just carry it around in your hands or put it in a bag. Now, so the only way you could get a true uh, pocket type binocular would be to um, downsize the objective lenses and, and go with a full compact making sure that the compact that you choose has this double hinge design. Um, I have a whole article on the best compacts um, that you can get and I'll link to that down in the description. But this double, particular double hinge design on the Steiner allows it, as you can see, to fold up when you're finished using it into a very small shape. And therefore, um, it becomes like the monocular, a true pocket sized binocular, which you can simply just pop away in your pocket and off you go. Right, so I've just compared the view between these two, and there's, it's pretty clear that with its single 30mm lens, this Opticon monocular is has producing a brighter image, or to me, I'm perceiving it as a brighter image than the image produced by this Steiner with its two 26mm lenses. Now, this test isn't exactly fair in the fact, in the reason being that this Steiner has a 10 times magnification, whereas this is an 8 times. So, if we were using a Steiner with an 8x26 or a, a compact, an e compact with an 8x26 with similar level optics, um, the exit pupil it produces would be slightly larger than the 2.6 millimeter one that this binocular produces. But nevertheless, on a sort of overcast day like today, um, where uh, light isn't optimal, there's no doubt that the larger exit pupil on this monocular and uh, obviously the corresponding good level of optics will produce um, a slightly brighter image than that of a, a compact binocular with smaller lenses. Now, so if we had to sort of rank these in terms of image brightness, image quality, on a day where the weather conditions or the light conditions aren't ideal, um, ideally for image brightness, image quality, you'd go with a binocular with the same size objective lenses as that of a monocular or, or bigger. The downside being then obviously you've got a bigger device. Next in line would be the monocular and then finally you get a compact binocular, which has the convenience of going nice and small, but wouldn't, um, in low light conditions, doesn't produce quite as bright an image as that of a monocular. The downside to the monocular is it doesn't, even um, comparing it to the compacts, I still feel that I have a far more immersive experience using a compact when compared to a monocular. So for these reasons, I tend to look at a monocular more as an instrument where, uh, that are good for gathering information or uh, identifying things, rather than an instrument of, of pleasure, as it were. So for example, good case scenario, um, use case scenarios would be the fact um, for a survival bag, a lightweight survival bag, where you, you, know, you may perhaps need to scout ahead. I used these on a canoeing trip, you know, and it was, it was really good to have, be able to just have something really small, 
um, um, to bring out of my um, underneath my life vest and be able to scout uh, further on down the river just to make sure I was picking the right uh, pathway and not go down a you know a waterfall or something like that um, unintendedly. So um, where security is concerned, where you just want to. Um, uh, be able to identify things. I mean, even for birding and wildlife, it has its uses in the fact that if you need to just identify a bird quickly or be able to identify a certain wildlife, um, it can be um, a really good um, use for a monocular. Another thing would be for a, a get home bag or a, a get out, uh, a bug out bag or something like that for preppers. Um, so for example, um, the fact that it's so small, lightweight, um, low cost would be an excellent uh, use case of, for it. And the fact that you just need something that where um, you can scout ahead and uh, identify potential dangers or uh, a path that you want to take, you don't want to have to walk all that way and discover that it's, it's blocked off. So that is where a monocular can come in uh, real handy. On the other case, on the other, on the flip side, I should say that a binocular for me is is has a lot to do with pleasure and in, enjoying the experience. With two eyes, I most certainly get a much more immersive experience using a binocular. And therefore, when I'm um, using a binocular, it's for birding and wildlife, uh, um, watching wildlife and things like that, where I want to enjoy what I'm looking at, use both my eyes, and just get a, the quality um, of of the view with the same type of objective lenses and the same uh, level of optics. Is, is, is superior and, and therefore if whenever um, image quality is of premium to me and is more important and, and the enjoyment of the experience is more important than size and weight I would opt for a binocular over a monocular. Right, so the light's beginning to fade on me a little here, so I need to just make sure I don't have, make too many two more mistakes after reshoot everything. Anyway, uh, another potential advantage of a monocular over a binocular is the fact that it's just far simpler and far easier for manufacturers to make. You know, they don't need to worry about uh, aligning the, the two barrels up perfectly and ensuring that when you adjust the focus, this adjusts exactly the same on both barrels, just so that it's, you get perfect alignment. With a the monocular, there's no such worry, and therefore it's, it's a lot easier device to make with far fewer parts. Now, to begin with, that means that it's, they're usually cheaper. Um, sometimes not always quite half the price of a binocular unfortunately but definitely um, like for like a monocular at, with the same level of optics and the same build quality is, is, is can be quite substantially cheaper than an equivalent binocular. The other potential advantage um, is the fact that because it's easier and simpler to make and has less parts there's less that can go wrong with a binocular. I mean a monocular. So for instance um, with these collimation um, and lining up a binocular you know if you were to knock it there's the potential that something or, or something could move inside there or you know one of the mechanisms and uh, you would have collimation issues and you know therefore something would go wrong with your binocular. With a monocular this problem is, is non-existent and therefore in terms of robustness there's the potential or um, the, the monocular would just be a little bit longer lasting. Now in reality if you're buying a quality binocular um, you know this shouldn't at all be an issue and indeed I've never had a, a, such a problem and as long as you look after your binoculars that is. So um, at the mid to um, high um, end level of optics, I, I, you know, I wouldn't put too much weight on this. But if you're shopping at the lower tier, like, you know, at the entry level, um, then definitely I would give the advantage to the monocular in terms of robustness. You know, so if you know that you're going to be um, uh, I wouldn't say mishandling, but you know, if you're going to leave your binocular, you know, in the bottom of your bag or, or throw it in the car in the cubby hole and it's going to get knocked about a bit, um, then I would definitely. Uh, well, I would definitely give some credence to choosing a monocular over a binocular. Right, so what have I learned today? Well, firstly, as is so often the case when it comes to optics especially, there's no clear winner here, and it rather comes down to your particular needs and uses. If size, weight, portability, and the price difference is of major importance to you, then a monocular is certainly worth considering over a similar quality binocular with similar or the same size lenses. If on the other hand you want to be sure of having the best viewing experience and image quality then in most cases I personally would reach for my binocular. Right so there you have it but wait before you go I just want to let you know that the full review of this Optochrome monocular will soon be live on the BBR website. Once it is I'll leave a link down in the description below just in case you're interested. 
Other than that, if you did find this video interesting, um, useful or whatever, please, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if at all possible, or if you want to see future videos from BBR, please do remember to subscribe, hit that little bell button and all that good stuff, as it really does help this channel. Other than that, I just want to say, if you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, opinions or whatever, please also use that comment section down below and I'll do my very best to get back to you. So other than that, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Cheers for now.